This is a robotic hiatal hernia repair. A hiatal hernia is when the stomach gets pulled up into the chest. As demonstrated here, part of the stomach is pulled up into the chest through a widening of the esophageal hiatus or where the esophagus comes through the diaphragm muscle. This repair is done with four eight millimeter ports. The operation starts with the liver retractor that pulls the left lobe of the liver up so you can see the esophageal hiatus. As you can see, this hole should not be present. Uh, it should be a tight opening around where the esophagus enters the abdomen and the stomach, as you can see, is pulled up into the chest. So the goals of this surgery are to take the hernia sac out to mobilize enough length of intra-abdominal esophagus where it has no tension pulling up back into it and then to do a partial or full wrap depending on surgeon preference and patient um, preference around the, uh, the stomach doing a funduplication at the end. And so this is taking down the hernia sac, which is that involuted peritoneum that's been pushed up into the chest. That's the first part of the surgery is taking down that hernia sac, which the robotic platform really shines during. So you have the heart laying up top, the aorta laying below, and the, the lung cavities laying on both sides. So we like to be precise about where we are, seeing if any more stomach comes into the abdomen, moving it out of the way so we can take, keep taking that hernia sac, and make an incision in the peritoneum around where the muscle fibers for the, the cruce of the diaphragm are. Because those are the muscular layers that we're gonna close at the end of the surgery to close that hernia defect. This is further mobilization of that hernia sac way up into the chest. This patient had a fairly large hernia, and the CT scan preoperatively showed around you know, 65 to 75 percent of the stomach was actually in the chest. So hernia sac is down, heart is up, screen left is the right lung. And so now we're taking down the short gastric, which is the fatty structure between the stomach and the spleen, and that holds some blood vessels in it, and so we're using a vessel sealer device to minimize bleeding during this. So now we're back on the right side, you can see the inferior vena cava, that's the right cruce muscle. We're taking a Penrose drain, putting it around the GE junction or the gastroesophageal junction, it helps retract the esophagus so we can get a little bit more retraction, and it's a traumatic way of lifting the esophagus away from, see here the aorta is below. So we're taking that mobilization of the esophagus way high up into the mediastinum. And this is what keeps the tension low when we uh, are done with the surgery. You can see the aorta nicely below that white tubular structure. And so that's the hernia sac we're pulling down. Some surgeons take the hernia sac out at the end. I generally do not unless it's inhibiting a good um, fundiplication at the end. There's some further esophageal mobilization anteriorly. So once we've mobilized enough intra-abdominal esophagus, we move towards closure of that hiatal hernia defect. And the, the goal is to close the two muscular layers on the left and the right together. Those we call those the cruce of the diaphragm. And so we're going to take this closure all the way up towards it gets close to the esophagus. And this is that closure of the defect. See the IVC or the inferior vena cava there? So you gotta be careful with these bites. You don't take too big of a bite on the right cruise. You can get into some bleeding. This is a permanent V-lock suture, which is my preference in this situation, but lots of surgeons use figure of eight um, sutures of a, a non absorbable suture. So once the cruise is closed, so it's tight uh, to the esophagus, but not so tight that it's gonna cause dysphagia or difficulty swallowing. This uh, suture locks on itself when you bring it back one or two throws. So that's what we're doing now. And so once those muscles are closed and the diaphragm is tightened around the esophagus, the last step is to do a fundiplication where we're wrapping the stomach around the 
esophagus stomach junction. It's my personal preference to do a partial, it's called a toupee posterior 270 degree fund application in this situation. Lots of surgeons do full Nissen 360 degree fund applications. And that's sort of a surgeon preference and based on certain patient factors about whether or not they have preoperative esophageal dysmotility issues. And it's always a give and take of how much dysphagia you're willing to risk versus how much acid reflux you're willing to risk at the end of the surgery long term. And so this fund application is done with three separate sutures on each side, usually spaced one centimeter apart. And at the conclusion, we always do an endoscopy to make sure there's no sign of injury. That's the hernia sac hanging down. Thanks for watching.